So chances are you just purchased or thinking of purchasing a drawing JY Tech HO S01N 4GS Tac 2 or 1 respectively. And you're probably looking for tips and tricks on that installation. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the internet. I'll be your guide today. So I've went ahead and broken down this install into eight separate parts. I'll start with the unboxing and then wiring all the harnesses together. Rear camera install, wire routing, dash disassembly, head unit fitment, bezel trim, and lastly a quick feel of the overall user interface. Let's go ahead and get started guys. Alright guys, came home today and it was finally here. It actually got here pretty quick from China. I think it was like seven days total. So, first things first, I'm going to open it up for you guys. Let's see how it feels, how it looks up close. All that jazz. Hopefully I don't get COVID. That's it for inside of there. All right. Main processor unit, I guess you'd call it. Nothing too crazy special. Seems pretty straightforward, pretty standard for a stereo like this. Easy to follow a little diagram for uh, wiring this guy up, which we'll get to later on in this video. This should be all the accessory wires, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I really don't know what all is included with this. Yeah, a lot of shit in there. Okay. So cool, we got two, looks like two USBs. Cool. This is your GPS antenna. I still gotta figure out a good spot in the car to put this. I was thinking in the, in the halo somewhere I can hide it. Maybe in the trunk, I don't know. This looks like your pigtail that connects to the vet one situation. This, I don't know. Oh, this is, I think the Sirius, yeah, Sirius XM receiver, I think. There's two of them. Actually, I don't know what this is for. So yeah, I don't even know what these are for. Well, so we got GPS, the SIM cards on here for the 4G. One thing I think of, this would be for uh, satellite radio, perhaps. I'll come back to this, I'll, I'll make a note external microphone and this has a internal mic microphone built in from what i've read the internal mic works just fine so i don't think i'll be using this but we'll see how it works and i might i might use this we'll see I'm making a freaking mess here cool and this looks pretty straightforward uh this right here we're going to end up cutting so we're not going to use this pigtail um this is your rear backup camera which i will be routing in a portion of this video as well the rest of these are pretty much all your speakers and accessories, if I'm not mistaken. But we'll get into the wiring a little later on. All right, and here's the screen. What I'm really curious about. It actually has a really good weight to it. It's not terribly heavy, but it feels sturdy you know what i mean i know it's from china but it doesn't feel like chinese crap so far so yeah this actually feels really nice for being a chinese product first impression not bad build quality is pretty good it feels sturdy the screen looks really good and this looks the size of this looks awesome. Looks like it's gonna fit just fine. And I think the edges, I know they're beveled on the dash. I am gonna file them down square. You'll see that when I get to it. But it should fit 
perfectly in there. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. It's so cool. Cool. Yeah, this ribbon right here is gonna mount. I can mount this by itself behind it, and then this will obviously get routed to right there. Boom, good to go. Awesome. And of course, here's the VET1 pack that you need to interface with the stock Bose speakers because they have the amps interface with them already. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the garage. I'm gonna start soldering all of the speaker wire to the Juing sound system interface. Cool, see you guys out in the garage. All right guys, welcome to the wiring up the radio interface to the Pack Vet one system. I'm gonna go ahead and walk you through the basic wiring principles to this whole operation. It's fairly straightforward. This is the, the joint pigtail right here, which we're gonna end up cutting off this right here. This is the Vet one pack situation. All these, I'm a fucking god damn it. So all these over here, we're not gonna use. So I will be taping all these up and out of the way. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect this to make it easier for us to work with this guy. I got all my pieces of literature I'm going to need to do this. Uh, the drawing diagram, the pack OE one that came with it, and the amendment over there, which talks about the blue white wire, which I'll explain in a minute. A couple of things you're going to need to do this job is a soldering iron, some solder, um, probably a beer, uh, some sort of wire crimpers, cutters, and some heat shrink for the wires we're going to be soldering. All right, first things first, let's go ahead and get this guy cut. It's really shitty, I need a new one. Splice these ends really well. Looks like I got them all cut and ready to go. Luckily this one's already all set. It's a matter of taking off the little coverings. So, and I'm not at all an expert solderer, so feel free to make fun of my soldering skills. That's fine. For the first wire we're gonna do, that's really important uh, per this little amendment right here, is we're gonna do a blue wire on the interface on this one, solid blue. This guy right here has to go to the blue and white on this guy and all the forms i saw before i tackled this said this was very important so these two have to be soldered for this to work and it contradicts the directions of this i think so they have the amendment to correct that so we'll go ahead and do that first so there's no confusion and that's taken care of So our first wire is good to go. All right, secondly, I'm gonna do the, which is I believe the battery, which is constant power to obviously battery on this side. Cool. All right, now it's just a matter of matching up the speaker wires, which is pretty tedious. Oh, and ground wire too. Ground wire is also important, obviously. Also, once you get to the end, you'll notice there's four speaker wires left. This little red 
stripes on them. These are for low voltage, which we're not gonna use. So you can go ahead and cut these off. All right, so at this point, you should have a harness that looks like this. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this in a second, clean it up. Um, your backup camera will go into this guy when we get to that part of it. This is your, your ignition switch. This is not your constant, this is your ignition 12 volt, uh, which is really important. And we will be routing this under the dash and we will get to that in another step. And I, I believe we use this one or this one for illumination. I'll make a note and we'll come back to this part too. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this cleaned up. All right, so at this point, your harness should look like this. You don't have to wrap it up. I did, it looks a little cleaner. And we will be getting an extension for this. That's later on. All right, so next we're gonna move on to the reverse camera. Let's go. All right, here we go, backup camera time. The camera I'm using is by Rayu. Rayu, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, I got this off Amazon for roughly, geez, I don't know, 15, 16 bucks. Has really good reviews. Uh, pretty straightforward. You got your camera, you got your little uh, RCA. It's gonna connect all the way up to the front. This is for your DC power, um, which is gonna connect into this guy. And we're gonna tap into the rear reverse light for our ground and 12 volt power. And up front, when we get there, this little guy is gonna to connect to our wire that says back, one of these says back right here. And this is the pretty much kind of like your trigger wire. And it tells your uh, your screen to turn on your, your backup camera. So that's where we're at right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and mount this up. It does come with a little hole saw. For the way I'm doing it, I'm not gonna be using this. I am gonna drill into the Corvette's rear bumper up here. You really won't see it. I'm gonna route the wire I'm gonna drill into here to mount the camera, route the wire in here. I'm gonna connect it to the reverse light right there. I'm gonna borrow power and the grounds, and then I'm gonna run it up under the carpet. And this carpet's really easy to pull up. The FRC seems to be a lot easier to run. So pretty much up over the carpet, and then up over the hump, and then right into the center console. So let me go ahead and start getting this squared away. Okay, so I got it all wired up in the back here to the reverse light. Pretty much how I have this is this is coming off the camera right there. This is your, your DC power. Um, I have the two positive wires, the little one coming off the yellow RCA and the positive coming off the DC connector spliced into the green wire back here, which is your positive. And then the one negative off the DC power is spliced into the one negative right there. Hope you guys can see that. It's kind of a clusterfuck, but it's in there, it's secure, it's good. This little bundle right there, just kind of wrapped it up pretty good. I'll secure it back here, out of the way. And then the long 18 foot deal right here, I'm gonna start routing it up inside the tub somehow, um, to the, through the trunk, over the hump, and to where the head unit's going to go. All right, so the back here is pretty much done. I did go ahead and drill a little hole in the tub. I don't know if you can see it, just make it easier. I routed the, the long 18 foot wire through it, I put some silicone on it just in case whether rain was to get in there, I doubt it, but just, you know, make me feel a little better. Um, all the DC powering, about the four foot of it, I wrapped it up and bundled it, and I zip tied it back here. You will not, you will not see this ever. That way it's not gonna be bouncing around and stuff. Um, I'm not gonna button all this up yet until I test the radio and know it's working well, just so in case I have to make any adjustments or anything. So now I'm gonna go ahead and route the wire underneath the carpet over the hump and then we'll start taking apart the uh, front center console all right here we are up front taking this apart again i feel like i take this thing apart at least like once a week or something but it's really easy so whatever as, as you can see i got it routed all the way to right here and the carpet's not that great as far as uh, fit and finish of the corvette this this model year so just, you're not going to see it under the carpet and it's so tiny so once i get this off well, once all this is out, I will route this underneath this little carpet right there up to here. So right now, let's go ahead and get all this shit off of here. And if you're not familiar, it's it's really easy to do. There's some torques down there, right there, over there. Um, first thing you're gonna do though is undo these back here, 10 millimeter, boom, boom. This is gonna come off, this just pops off. There's so many tutorials on YouTube how to take this off. If you have any questions or issues taking this off, just reference one of those. And if you can't get this off, you probably have no business doing a radio anyways. All right, let's get to it.
All right, cool. So that's all out and already routed the wire underneath the little hump here. And as you can see, you cannot tell there's any traces of the wire, so don't worry about doing it this route. A lot of people like freak out about it. They want to run it outside the car and through the side of the door and do the sill and back up around. That's fine too. There's no wrong way to do it or right way to do it. Um, this way just seemed to be the easiest situation for what I'm doing and I'm okay with it and I don't think anyone will ever know it's there. So here we go. All right, to take this guy out, the radio is pretty simple. It's two seven millimeters on both sides. Man, this thing is a freaking brick, dude. This thing's heavy as shit. Pretty archaic situation here. 27, 28 year old architecture, probably. So, yep, there she has a huge heat sink. Holy cow. All right, that's what we're dealing with. I do know for the write up I found online, we do have to take these little tabs off right there and right there and cut this little guy off right there. Maybe trim some of this too. Looks like it's in the way. So, we'll, we'll address that momentarily. All right, let's go ahead and start prepping this area for the new head unit. I'm going to take a little bit of this off right there. That cuts really nice and easy. Terrific. Now, for whatever reason, mine's already missing this screw, but there should be a screw right there, and you do got to remove it anyway, so you might as well just go ahead and take that off. And I don't know if everyone needs to do this I don't know if everyone's trim's a little different but mine just seems to have a lot of extra shit up here and I don't think I need cool next you should just kind of wiggle off from what I read maybe from what I read though they just kind of come off So far, they're not really just coming off. I think it's really on there. It's getting loose, like it wants to come off. Come on, motherfucker. Man, bending it's all I'm doing. Ah, there we go. Success. Okay, it's just kind of riveted in the back there. I, I understand now. So yeah, you just gotta kind of get it on there and just give it the business. Little bitch ass. Oh, you are gonna need an antenna adapter for this job too. But that'll be in the description of shit you're gonna need. Okay. I'm gonna have to bend that back over a little bit. Let's see, I torqued it out a little bit. Let's see what I can do with this guy. Yes, I know it's not made for this. Oh, that worked pretty well. Cool. So, now it's just a matter of, uh, getting the processing unit back in there, wired to it, and get that secured, maybe some zip ties or something, and then dry fitting the, uh, the screen. All right, let's try that. All right, just dry fitting it in there. This thing fits obnoxiously perfect. Um, I did have to take a razor to some of the trim up there. I guess the molding, the burr on it was kind of big, but once I got all that, buttoned up or worked out it just kind of snapped in there perfectly and then I'm gonna go down here and start fetching that accessory wire and routing it up and getting all this wired together all right sure enough just how legend has it there is three wires down here your orange your black and your yellow your yellow being your accessory 12 volt so this is my extension for my power going to my uh Head unit, I'm gonna go ahead and solder this in. I'd rather solder it, I just feel better about soldering things. And then, uh, yeah, we'll start getting everything wired 
up in the console. All right, guys, I got it all wired up to what I, I think is right. There's only one wire I didn't, haven't done yet, and that is the illumination. One of these down here, down to the HVAC, and I'll do that last. So yeah, I just plugged the battery back in. I'm actually like really nervous. I'm gonna go ahead, put it in. Let's see. Oh shit, there we go, we got signal. That's pretty cool. Oh shit, that's pretty, that's pretty slick. Okay, okay. Keep in mind, I have not yet installed my GPS yet. I probably am not gonna do the 4G because I'm gonna use my phone, but I will go over where you should mount that if you're gonna do the 4G. Actually, I wanna see if the uh, rear camera will work. And I think it'll work with the um, engine off, I think. So. Nothing, oh, okay. Oh shit, all right, it does work. Um, I just have to fix the camera position. Shit, okay, yeah, so it works. I just have to fix the, uh, the position on it. I guess I didn't think about that when I screwed it on. So no big deal. It looks like everything is functional. Let me see if, oh, we got some sound. Oh yeah, I can take it out of reverse. Cool. I don't have radio hooked up yet. I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, is there any kind of stock things? It sounds really good. I don't know what the hell am I doing. Is there anything on here? No, I don't know why there would be anything on there. Um, well shit, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm, I'm pretty stoked, this all works. Uh, I'm gonna get it all, all this for tonight, buttoned back up in the back too. And then tomorrow I'm gonna work on fabricating the, the bezel so I don't have to root it. If you are trying to root it, I will leave a really detailed description on how to do that, a, a link or down below or something. Oh, and one last wiring thing I, I have to do is the illumination wire, this orange and white cream one deal. I'm gonna go ahead and splice it into the HVAC cream colored wire right here. Um, orientated. The blue clip on the left, it's the one closest to you right there. This is a easy illumination you can tap into. Just a quick little tip for you. Bitty bam. All right, that should be the last piece of wiring for this whole situation. So now I just have a fuck ton of wire management to deal with. Down there too, that won't that be too hard. Um, but yeah, somehow getting this all in the dash in a organized, systematic fashion and getting everything back together. I guess actually the last thing I have to get wired up is the two USB cords. And I'm just gonna run mine under, under the console into the little storage area where the cigarette lighter is. I don't call it a day. And the GPS, I'm just gonna route it on top of this metal cage right there. From everything I've, I've read, the GPS antenna on top of this is fine. It gets a signal just fine. Yeah, so let me get this going back together. I'm gonna do the real hardcore fabricating tomorrow around the edges here. Square them out a little bit so you can see the whole screen. But just to get the bezel to fit, you do have to make a couple adjustments. And those being, there's two little like guides, I guess you'd call them, right here and right here. They're like little plastic posts. Cut those off. You don't really need them, and it'll make sense why once you put this on. And up here, these top two, hope you can see them. Yeah, these guys right here, these right here, you gotta make a little notch inside there. I just used a piece of uh, 10 snips and a razor to get the burr out, but yeah. Because that's gonna fit over top the edge of the screen here. Now, without these little posts there, it's not a big deal because this thing fits so snug with these little guys right here over top. When this is in, it is in good. Like, it is really tight, like absurdly tight. It's almost like it was made for this. It's pretty nuts. Yeah, and I decided I'm just going to use one USB cable running into my console. There's already so many wires, wires back there. It's getting kind of crazy. What else? What else? What else? So, yeah, I'm going to call it night for tonight, and then tomorrow I'll start fabricating the bezel. Um, but I think all the wiring's done and tested and good. 
yeah so far i'm pretty happy with it no complaints yet yeah i'll see you guys in the morning for some fabricating and then final install and then i'll take you through the os and that'll be a wrap all right really quick here in the back with it all buttoned up yeah i'm pretty happy with that when you're kind of standing up you can't even see it when you have to really come down and look at it you can see the length part you can see where i routed it is right there you can see the wire go up and over but that's really hard to see you have to be at an extreme angle to see that but it looks really clean and i'm really happy with that so yeah with that camera for 15 16 bucks that's pretty cool all right guys good morning day number three on this project last night when i was going to sleep i came across a blurb on a forum uh, that's very unique to the drawing radio and that is almost every other radio on the market goes blue wire from the pack one to the blue white on the receiving radio this one does not this one goes from a blue on the pack one to the orange black to turn on, turn on the amp and i listened to it this morning and it was a noticeable difference um it was much richer uh, slightly slightly more bass and it did sound markedly better and I will leave a note when I'm doing the wiring process but in case you didn't see that the pack one blue goes to orange black on the join harness note it's kind of weird and I just happened to come across it on a form and it worked very well all right so today should be our last day is Today, the name of the game is Patience. Um, let me get a light here. Hopefully you can see this. I got a file and I'm gonna take my time. And what I'm gonna do, I, I tried it just a little bit and it worked very well. Um, I'm gonna square off all the edges and on the sides, I'm gonna take it in about eighth of an inch to make a quarter inch. And that should reveal all of the screen. Um, yeah, so. I, I don't know if anyone's ever done this. I don't know if there's a right way to do this. Like I said, I'm gonna use a file and take my time to do this. A Dremel tool might work, but I feel like that's too quick. And if you fuck up, you fuck up too hardcore. So, cool. I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. And what I might do after I get it all to my liking, uh, squared out and cut out, I might just plasti dip just the part that I cut so it looks a little better. But we'll see. I might just stand it down really good. All right, guys, hopefully this works. And then after this, I can get the bezel in, car put back together, and do a UI review. Cool, all right, let's get going. All right, I think I got it to where I'm happy with it. There's a little bit, I mean, we're talking a little bit, I can't see, I can live with that. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean it up here. Honestly, it's not that bad. You really can't tell, it's been filed. I might gotta put some more stain lacquer on it or something to give it the identical sheen, but yeah, it's, it's not bad. It's pretty square for what it is. You really won't be able to tell from the car. All right, let's see how it looks in the car. All right, guys, here's where we are. Not the best job, but you probably aren't gonna notice it if you're not looking for it. 
It fits very well. If you have a quarter inch down here, you can't help that. I think there's maybe a sixteenth of an inch on both sides that you can't see. And this is almost flush up here. But yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. And I think I'll be able to navigate the screen just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and get all this button back up. Oh, and I secured this. It's in there already really well, but I took a little piece of shim and some really strong two-sided Gorilla Tape uh, on the back of the screen to the mounting plate. It's not gonna go anywhere. There probably is a better way to fabricate something. But like I said, this thing, once this thing, this bezel on top of it and it, it really sandwiches it in there, it's not gonna move. But I put the tape on there, just gave me a little, little bit more of a, a little more peace of mind. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all back together. And then, uh, yeah, I'll take you through the user interface. See you guys like it. All right, here we go. We got it all set up, cleaned up pretty good. I'm very happy with it. I got my phone connected via Bluetooth. Super simple to do. As you can see, the right side is perfect. The left side, I probably could have shaved off an eighth more of an inch, but nonetheless, I can still hit everything just fine. Again, I'm getting this out to you guys as soon as possible. I probably will go back and trim this a little bit, but you saw how I did that, super simple. The only hang up I still have not kinked worked out yet is really simple. And it's just getting a grommet for right there where the Bluetooth or the uh, USB comes out, but no big deal. I will fix that. So the, the sound quality on this thing is freaking amazing. There's not a tremendous amount of bass, but this car or the Bose was ever meant to be a huge bass maker. But let me uh, turn this up for you a little bit. Hope I don't get copyrighted. It sounds so clear. It's so much louder than this, the factory situation. But yeah, very, very happy with it, guys. One last thing I wanted to touch on, if you did want to do 4G, like I said, I'm using my phone for everything, running Bluetooth for navigation, even though it has a built-in navigation with GPS and that doesn't work just fine. Let me see here, let me see here. The, oh, and it's very quick too. Um, much faster than I thought. I thought it was gonna be a really slow piece of shit, but no, it's and like the boot up time when you start the car, it's maybe two seconds and you're good to go. Uh, it's Android Auto, and from what I read, as long as you plug in your iPhone, it will interface with it just fine. You might need an app to do that, I'm not sure, but all the forms I read, it works just fine. The equalizer is very intuitive. Um, I have it set to pop. I think it, feel, it sounds the best on pop, but you can do standard and do it yourself, but I think it's just fine. Overall, very happy with it. Um, I hope you guys found this informative. Oh yeah, what was I going to say? The, if you're going to do 4G, I would recommend routing the 4G antennas back around the dash under the sill and up probably behind here. That's what I would do if I was gonna do 4G. But you can do whatever you want. That would be my recommendation. But yeah, and you could probably do this in about seven hours. I chopped it up into three days just because of work constraints and I was recording while I was going. Um, I did not hit any major hiccups while doing this. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys like it. It turned out really, really well. Cool. Any questions, of course, let me know in the comments below. Um, any tips, like I, I'm not a car audio installer by any means. Semi-knowledgeable with electronics and basic know-how and DIY, but I'm sure there's room for improvement. All right, guys, go enjoy your weekend. Appreciate you guys watching, later.